Welcome back to our book review series. Well, today I'll be reviewing a lovely book that I so love, so cherish and so admire. It's titled Word Origins and the Romantic Stories and it's written by American author and lexicographer Wilfred Funk. Well, have you ever wondered Why is the letter A the first letter of the English alphabet and why is B the second letter of the alphabet This book is probably one of the rarest of books that gives us some amazing astounding and engaging answers Here the reader will find the life stories of thousands of words how when and where they originated how their meanings changed and developed through the centuries and many other facts that gives a better understanding of the english language as it is today when compared with many languages the english language is relatively quite young in fact the english alphabet that we have today is a latin alphabet or a roman alphabet and there are 26 letters in this one alphabet please remember there is just one alphabet in english and 26 letters in this one alphabet but wait english is not the only language to make use of the latin alphabet other languages like german swedish french spanish italian and portuguese also make use of the latin alphabet the english language in particular was heavily influenced by both greek and latin the english alphabet is a borrowed alphabet from the latin most of the words in english are also borrowed words from the latin original can you believe it around 60% of our english words are derived either directly from latin or from latin through old french surprising isn't it of course the influence of greek on english is also immense even the word alphabet comes from the first two letters of the greek alphabet a compound of the first two letters of the greek alphabet alpha and beta wilfred funk says that each letter of our alphabet started with a picture or a drawing every word began as a picture So now the question yet again why is a the first letter of the alphabet and b the second letter and c the third letter it says that it's not a mere accident that the letter a became the first letter of all in ancient phoenicia some 3000 years ago The letter A was called Aleph and it meant ox. Since A was called Aleph and Aleph meant an ox, it was represented like a V, seemingly for the horns of an ox and had a slanted bar across it. But the Greeks later turned it upside down, which is the way we know it now and write it now. Aleph or the ox of course served the ancient Phoenicians for food and work and shoes and clothing So if a family had a herd of cattle then they were rich or wealthy by all means This could have been the reason that the ox or Aleph or A stands as our first letter what's of next importance for survival shelter of course 
And the letter B in Phoenician was called Beth, and Beth meant a tent or a house. And that's why, as we see here, their B looked like a two-chambered Far Eastern house with its one room for the men, the other for the women. In the same way, Beth, the Phoenician name for B, is preserved in the modern word Bethlehem, which means the house of food. Similarly, the letter H is supposed to have been the picture of a fence. The Phoenician L was the word sign for the whip with which they drove a camel. And G is thought to be the camel itself with its curved neck. The letter D or Dalet is a word sign which means dough and looks like a dough as well. The letter Z seems to have pictured a sword and a shield. The Phoenicians were great explorers and dared the seas. So, the word for M was Mem and meant water and this letter, much like ours in shape, merely represents the waves of the ocean. Why is Z the last of our 26 letters? There's a pretty little story behind it. In the ancient Greek alphabet, Z was the sixth letter. When the Romans took over, they thought that they would have no use for Z, so they dropped it. But later on they found that it was a necessary sound, but by this time Z had lost its old position and had to be put at the end of the line. And each of the chapters that follows discuss one aspect of word origins in a very engaging manner in such simple and beautiful English in this book by Wilfred Funk. In the second chapter, we have word origins connected with speaking and writing. For example, the word write originally meant to scratch, it says. Well, and that's because the primitive scratched on the birch bark or shingles with sharp stones and other pointed instruments. And in the lands around the Mediterranean, the pulp of the papyrus gave us our word paper. It's also quite interesting to know that the word pen comes from the word pena, which means a feather. And we still have quill pens as collector's items even today, says Wilfred Funk. The word book, then spelt bok, meant beech, because it was on the bark of that tree or upon beechwood itself that words then were scratched. The next chapter to the book, chapter number three, gives us some amazing words that have come down to us from proper names. Julius Caesar tops the list. For example, did you know that the word Caesar is responsible for the title Sa, first spelt Caesar, and from this same Caesar was derived Kaiser, the title of the German Empress. Even the operations that we call the C-section or the Caesarean came from Caesar's name, since it was popularly believed that the famous Roman was brought into the world in this fashion. The word boycott comes from Captain Boycott with an equally interesting story. Chauvinism also has an interesting story based on Nicholas Chauvin. I'm giving just a few representative examples so that you'll grab a copy of this wonderful book for yourselves as soon as possible. The word Guy similarly comes from the notorious Mr. Guy Fox, who was known for the famous gunpowder plot. Hobson's Choice comes from Thomas Hobson. 
our sandwich shops of today owe the name and the product they sell to John Montagu, 4th Earl of Sandwich, an Englishman of the 18th century. Do read this interesting story for yourself once you get for yourself a copy of the book. Likewise, the word saxophone comes from Joseph Sax. There's also an entire chapter devoted exclusively for the word origins behind all the months of the year and days of a week. An added delight is how he begins each chapter of his book with such glowing, enduring descriptions on the beauty of the English language. Take, for example, the introductory lines to chapter 11, where he talks in detail about where our word origins for animal names come from. And I read, The wealth of our English language is almost beyond belief. We speak, for instance, of the calf of a cow, but the calf of a horse is a foal. The foal of a bear is a cub. The cub of a beaver is a kitten. The kitten of a deer is a fawn. The fawn of a sheep is a lamb. The lamb of a dog is a pup. The pup of a goat is a kid. The kid of a wolf is a whelp. The whelp of a kangaroo is of all things a joey. I would like to bring to a gentle close this little review of Funk's word origins and the romantic stories with a couple of impactful and endearing lines from Wilfred Funk himself. And I quote, To know the past of an individual helps us to understand him the better. To know the life history of a word makes its present meaning clearer and more nearly unforgettable. Words truly are little windows through which we look into the past. How true Wilfred proves. I'd be happy if you could grab for yourself a copy of this lovely book as quick as possible. Copies of this book are available on Amazon, on Flipkart and on many other e-stores as well. Thank you.